art show, so that was pretty cool. All right. So did painting fulfill your life? While I wasn't able to play my bass the same, it absolutely was my purpose. It was my fulfillment. And now it's something that I enjoy so much. Um, I, the last year has been completely engulfed in the Newstead band, but... You know, when I have a chance to paint again, I do it. I have my own studio and, you know, that kind of thing. And I've painted many hundreds of paintings. So yeah. it's, it's a very, very cool thing that I didn't know I had. And once I discovered it, it's something that's just fun every time because I get done with the canvas and I look and I go, wow, I had that inside me. And the same as the songs. You know, I just start playing the songs and it just happens and they just become a song. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize I had that song. I mean, I didn't realize you know, that that was in there until you start chasing it. So mm -hmm. all those are good surprises. Mm -hmm. We talked about Black Sabbath at the beginning of the interview, and you work with Tonya Yomi, actually, on, on the band Who Cares? Yeah. And how did you feel about that? It was maybe like a dream come true. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. When your greatest hero or the inventor of our music calls you on the phone at your house, <laughs> and says, hey, man, you want to come play bass for me? <laughs> Whoa. Okay, what time do you want me there, dude? What time? I'll get on my bike right now. <laughs> that's all it was. It was a dream. I couldn't believe it was true. I actually, at first, I thought it was someone playing a joke on me. Oh, really? Yeah. All of, all of our road crew guys are British, you know? Yeah. And so I thought that it was one of the road crew guys playing a joke on me. And I'm like, who is this? Who is this, really? <laughs> no, man, it's Tony. I'm like, holy <laughs> Um, you released three records with Voivod. Why didn't you stay in the band? Uh, well, it worked out just how it was supposed to. You know, we had songs composed when Piggy was alive. Yeah. We recorded, we recorded all of the songs that we had together. Once those songs were recorded, I was done. Because Piggy is gone. And we, we completed what we had done together, and that was it for me. Okay. Um, and because, you know, right at that same time is when I was struggling with my surgeries. Oh. Black, and Blackie talked about coming back into the band, and that's all I ever wanted. You know, when I started, I put millions of dollars into Voivod so that they could be alive again, you know? And mm -hmm. I never asked for anything back. And it was just so that they could live, because I think they're the most unique metal band that's ever been in the history of our time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted to make sure they could breathe and live again. And so to get three of the original, the three living original members back in the band, and then Dan comes in on guitar that was just very uh, much in honor of Piggy. He, he's very much uh, paying homage to Piggy every day. And so to have that unit back like that makes me happier. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how they're supposed to be. And then at that point, I was already moving on with my other stuff. So uh, about 2008, uh, 2009, we put Infini out. And then Blackie mm -hmm. came back in the band, and they started doing their live shows. At that point, I started getting Papa Wheelie back together and started getting my muscles back together and my therapy, building mm -hmm. my shoulders back up. By All right. 11, I was able to play bass again, and I got strong. I started. I went back to play uh, the 30th anniversary with Metallica at the end of 2011 once my shoulders were okay. Then I started writing songs for this band, and here we are. Awesome. So it was all very much a natural necessity thing that was supposed to happen. There's no negativity whatsoever. I just played with Voivod in, in France uh, a month ago. We played at Hellfest together. I played the song Voivod. It was Blackie and I, both bass players, playing at once. And so we're, we, are, uh, we cheer each other on. We're fans of each other's bands. We wear each other's band's T-shirts. And, you know, that's how it is with Voivod. They're my brothers forever. And why didn't you stay in Aussie with Aussie Osborne? He, uh, we had done the whole 2003 European tour, and I was playing in Voivod and Ozzy at the same time. Mm -hmm. so during the summer of uh, the Ozfest of, of 2003, I played 62 shows in 60 days. Whoa. Because I played in both bands. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, and then, That's a lot. So when Sharon asked me to join the band, because Robert went to Metallica, yeah. two days later Sharon called me and asked me to join their band. I went and joined their band. I went through all of the summer and played the shows that I just explained to you. Then we were going, because I made the deal with her, you know, I'm in Voivod, and I don't, I'm not leaving Voivod, so if you want me to play in Ozzy, you have to let Voivod open all the Ozzy shows. Mm -hmm. And she agreed to that. Oh. So we were preparing to go to Europe on the Ozzy tour following Ozfest. Ozzy got in an ATV accident and broke his collarbone. Yeah, I remember that. The tour got canceled. And so I went on with Voivod making records because Ozzy didn't have a band. He wasn't playing. He was he was in the hospital for six 
for eight months or whatever, so there was no Ozzy Osbourne band. I went on with Voivod to make another records and records and records and kept on doing my thing. So, you know, it was because Ozzy uh, broke himself, basically. Yeah, oh, now, now, now I see. And what do you think about Robert Trujillo performance with Metallica, now that you mentioned him? I think he's a great, great, great bass player. Mm -hmm. um, we've been friends for at least 20 years. Um, I, I thought he was a great bass player in uh, Suicidal. I had yeah. all the Infectious Grooves records. Yeah, I amazing, still, funky group. I still group. thought he was the shit in Infectious. That was his band. He wrote all those songs. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, I, I always looked at him as a great, great bass player. I think he's kind of more of a funky kind of bass player. Yeah. As, you know, for that. But he has fit into Metallica now. He's made his own way. It took eight or ten years for him to find his place, I think, because people were so convinced by my thing over time, you know. Yeah, still, still, he's, uh, still. I think he's a fantastic thing for Metallica, and they're powerful, and they're out there still setting the standard, and I'm always a big fan of Metallica, and a big fan of Robert. Yeah, but Robert can't do your vacuum vocals. That's true, but he can play bass uh, probably better than me in a lot of spots, so that's okay. <laughs> we kind of, we switch things, we uh, bob and weave, you know. Yeah, I mean, Robert Trujillo in, in infectious groups is an, a monster player, you know. I have all those records. And just to finish, uh, what about Papa Willie or R8 Sexoturica? Are they coming back? Maybe sometime? Well, Papa Wheelie is forever. It's kind of a perpetual thing. We've had it going since 1996, and we changed members. And I started out playing drums, then I went to bass, and now I play guitar and sing. So it's just kind of a switch fun thing that we have in our studio, and every once in a while we take it out to play for some people. We don't take it very seriously. It's mostly improvisational music, you know. Um, so it's always alive, and it pops its head up whenever there's time. So it lives, probably lives forever. Um, the irate thing was just a one-off, and that was 1994, and that was with Devin and uh, Tom Hunting. So that was yeah. once-in-a-lifetime thing, I think, probably for that. And then the uh, Sexo Turk and the other stuff, they were just projects to capture the moment. Mm -hmm. I do have a lot of archival things. Um, you know, I literally have thousands and thousands of hours of all the projects that we've done with many players from you know, Machine Head, Exodus, Sepultura, all of the Bay Area bands uh, at through different times. So I plan on releasing some of that stuff and sharing with people as the years go by what I consider the uh, Chop House Archive Vault. So it's going to be... Um, Now that I have my website up and that's established mm -hmm. and everything through time, I'm going to share some of those old projects with people. And what about Echo Brain? Echo Brain is uh, defunct. Uh, I know that Dylan Duncan went on to have a solo project. He made a couple of his own records, and I haven't really talked to him for a lot of years. Uh, I keep in ch uh, touch with the drummer, Brian, and I saw the guitar player, Chris, at the uh, Newstead show in New York a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we're still friends, but Echo Brain was just a kind of a short-lived, very special thing, but I have to tell you that as far as the first Echo Brain record goes, I consider that the masterpiece of my career. Really? Uh, I think that it's the very best musical offering that I have ever done. Uh, I like the Newstead album, I like the Voivod albums and all that stuff, but I think Echo Brain is the very best thing that I've ever been a part of. Mm, how come? It's the most musical diverse diversity, it's the most honest and the most authentic. We... Um, We went up into the hills in Northern California. It's a self-contained studio, uh, nothing around. There's no stores or people or any city or anything. It's just locked in the mountains, and you stay there for the whole time. There's a chef, and you just live in the studio. And we just went there and hung out and uh, drank mushroom tea and smoked uh, the green ganja and just made it beautiful, hippie music, and it just really, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, Like music is supposed to be, like people hang out together and make the music true and honest. So that's why I feel it's the most special and the most listenable.